Welcome to the review of 2022's About Sasha, or in its original French, Jean Tendre. And if, they're, if they do more than one season, then this review may only encompass season one. And yeah, I'll do additional videos down the line about later seasons. But right now, I'm not entirely sure it's going to get more than one season. So, it is Pride, and to celebrate, I wanted to focus on some stories that are positive depictions of trans, LGBTQ experiences. So, yeah, here we go. I'm going to start by telling you this was a show, or at least season, that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes but not at the expense of LGBTQ people and I will get into some serious topics and let's see. yeah I realize this video is long I'm doing I can to make it worth your time this video is a review where I don't intend to spoil anything if I end up deciding to spoil something I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. If you want my spoiler filled thoughts on episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. And let's see. Yeah, so the show is rated 18 plus, and so is this video. Now, I am a straight cisgender man. I don't say that because I'm afraid of someone mistaking me for gay, trans, or any other some such thing, any other letter of LGBTQ+. But to say that up front, I don't have personal experience with certain of the things depicted in the show. I will try to be respectful. I don't wish to offend any minority. I'm going to be discussing some of them. I'm going to, to try to not get any of it wrong. If someone watches this video, really thinks I'm wrong, especially if they're intersex or trans, please let me know. I will take it down or edit it. You know, if so, please let me know which parts I'm wrong about. The reason I make this video is that a number of Allosis het individuals will not listen to anyone outside of their group, and so might not hear anyone go into this show who is an ally of LGBTQ. Now, let's see. Yeah. yeah, and I haven't talked to people in, in person who are LGBTQ. I don't really, if, if, I, if I've encountered people in my personal life that were gay or trans, they weren't out and they passed. I did read some online articles. And, right, so... On, you know, this was on Disney Plus. I was really, you know, still haven't. It, it does not seem like they have something that's fictional and feature length or, or a show that is actually possibly shows, but I I've, don't review as many shows anyway. And this one I did because it was in part because it was so short, but it seems like right now there are no feature length fiction, you know, yeah, movies about trans people on Disney+. Plus. I, I hope that they do address that. But, yeah, this is on Disney+, Plus and the Brie Larson-hosted show about coming of age called Growing Up is also on Disney+, Plus, and episode 5 is about a trans woman and the good and bad she experienced. That whole show is recommended, and the same thing for the short documentary Mac Wrestles, which is about a trans um, man. I was, I was wondering whether to call him a boy or a man, but yeah. And let's see. Yeah, so the show does feature some strong language, some of very homophobic, but it's used to illustrate, not endorse. And uh, I think, yes, this is one of those cases where I will briefly go into... So yes, rated H 18 plus. There is some drug use in this and some violence. The the violence is not like bloody or or that kind of thing. 
there's there's also swearing and sex is talked about but it's not like you know it, it doesn't feature actual sex scenes which you know considering that it's French that's that's always something you know there's there's not something inherently wrong with depicting sex I'll, I'll get into that in in this video now I've watched every episode once I, I watched two episodes per day until you know over over the last week now the Disney plus summary it gives a very good plot synopsis here so spoiler free after moving to a new city Sasha starts at a new high school her mysterious and charismatic personality leaves a lasting impression everywhere she goes like any teenager making new friends flirting with boys and arguing with her parents are part of her everyday life but two weeks ago people knew Sasha as a boy as an intersex person she's newly embracing her feminine side but feels the need to hide her differences from others. Since during this show uh, Sasha identifies as female, I will be referring to her using she her pronouns and this is definitely something I I realize that a number of intersex people prefer they them. If if I'm wrong about this, please let me know. Um, but you know, over the course of the show, she definitely prefers to be referred to as uh, she her. And uh, right, um since this is on Disney Plus, some people I, I haven't seen for this specific thing, but I've seen it for other things on Disney Plus. You know, keep in mind it is behind the age lock, which means that if you are in a place, in a physical location where it is possible that children and teenagers will try to watch something on Disney Plus, you can password protect this and anything else above a certain age rating. The same thing goes for, for example, the Netflix Marvel shows, which are for adults, even though most of what Disney has made for, that's MCU is for teenagers. And you can watch this without really knowing very much at all about intersex. It does a really great job, you know, yeah, getting into what, what does it mean to be intersex. And this is absolutely a show that you can binge. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if it, if the episodes aired, if, if they all dropped on the same day or, or what, but yeah, this is definitely, I, I could definitely have sat down and just watched every single episode. And this is, I'm really going to miss, I, I'm probably going to rewatch this, but I'm really going to miss having new episodes of this to watch. Now, that, yes, let us get into the show's writing. So, let's see, yeah, um, the IMDb credits are not as yeah the only person credited for, for writing this is I am gonna butcher this poor woman's name um yeah Longmal and she uh, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna get into but she has a very specific reason for for working on this she has other um, I, it's possible all of these are, are French, but yeah, she's, um, yeah, some, some, um, oh, uh, maybe everything else is a movie that she's done, but, but yeah, um, and let's see, so, so yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure if this was, how, how many people wrote this or if it was just her just the one person but they definitely there's a there's a very unified voice on the show um, every single episode feels like it fits the same overall and I think it would have been very very it would really have hurt this show if there was an episode that just felt like okay that's completely different that's not always a bad thing there are some shows where like you know yeah, they'll have just specific episodes where, like, okay, that was definitely made by someone who had a very specific, like, yeah, you know, some of some of the the Star Trek shows, 
you know, there, every so often you'll come across an episode that's like clearly made by someone who had a very specific idea for, for what to do, and sometimes that's a really great thing, but I, it would not have worked for, for this show. Now, whenever we imagine things that we'd like to be able to do when someone has treated us unfairly, it's easy to just settle for something that makes you feel better, even if it doesn't necessarily improve things. So I really appreciate this as a show that has the maturity to actually present healthy alternatives to the negatives that it criticizes. Let's see. I honestly, go, going into it, I really thought it was going to be a very angry and um like uh, yeah an angry show of uh just yeah a, sh a show that that you know when, whenever you have something that's aimed at younger audiences it is very much like okay did the people who made this you know do they think back to those years of their lives and they're like oh worst thing ever or are they like mature enough to realize that maybe some of the things they said and did back then or or that they heard others saying do you know maybe there's more to it than you know and yeah it's it's very very mature very there's a lot of emotional intelligence on display and the the pilot or, or I suppose season opener is excellent really does a great job of you know, setting up the the major characters and conflicts for later in the show, and the the opening two individual episodes, you know, it it will very frequently open with a short clip that is like a flashback of some kind to to something that happened before Sasha started identifying as female. And, you know, gradually we understand how things got to be where they are, uh, you know, and very, yeah, usually right after this flashback, it will be a black screen and the, the title will, will fade in and we'll hear this kind of heavy breathing kind of thing that, you know, I think very likely is is sexual but it could be read into as just like ten tension you know but yeah the and the the finale you know it's one of those that work whether this is the only season the show gets or if it gets additional seasons and yeah it does a really great job like every important major plot, you know, sub subplot and such, are resolved in a satisfying manner. There's definitely some things that I was a little surprised didn't go someplace other than it did. But there's like it it doesn't end on a cliffhanger, for example. Now that brings us to direction and. The direction was also handled by Yal Lama and Jeremy Mengal. Mengi is also credited as director, and for both of them, it just says unknown episodes. Basically, the show is a teen drama where the lead is intersex. It's not making intersex people out to be completely different but underlines that it's mostly perception that if you support intersex individuals, if you accept them, they can be as good a friend or partner as any cis individual. And yeah, the, the direction is really, really solid. Um, it will sometimes use like establishing shots and, and sometimes even like shots with where it's, the frame is, is empty, where there's no living things in the frame kind of thing. And it, it uses these so sparingly that it really draws your attention to how much the show uses close-ups and there's there's sometimes like a, just a tiny little bit of movement in the camera rather than it being completely static and yeah like it's there's a, there's a lot of close-ups of people's faces 
a lot of it is about how they respond to one another, how they treat one another. And, you know, the most of the characters are teenagers. I think this might be the first French language show I've seen. I love French cinema. Uh, the other day I tried to think of all the French language movies I've seen. For some reason, I couldn't think of very many. I'll, I'll briefly go over, uh, you know, but if you do add in movies that are in English but directed by Frenchmen, the list does get somewhat longer. Like, I've, I've always really admired the work of... Luc Besson with, uh, you know, and, and yeah, they're, they're English language, but they, they definitely have his fingerprints all over them. Stuff like Leon, the Fifth Element, The Messenger, the story of Joan of Arc, that's the Mila Jovovich version of that story. Yeah, those are those are the ones that I've seen, you know, and the the let's see. So yeah, French language movies that I've watched that I'm certain that I watch include Doberman, Man Bites Dog, Delicatessen, Amelie, Taxi One, and I um oh right yeah okay so. I'm not going to claim that I think it's a good movie, but yeah, I did watch Vidoch by Pitoff. And also Catwoman, which, you know, people, I agree that Catwoman is a terrible movie. I think that's down to Pitoff. I really don't think, Hall Halle Berry did what she was asked to. She trusted the director. But, um, yeah. You know, other than that, I've watched other Jean-Pierre Genoux films than Emily and Delicatessen. You know, I I know a lot of people do not like Alien Resurrection. I think you have to just watch it with the right point of view. But yeah, big, big fan of Genoux, Luc Besson. Um, I, I'm going to really quickly find... So, yeah, and uh, Jean Cunin, who directed Doberman, just, yeah, really, really fun. And there's a lot of French movies that I really like to, to watch. So, but, but yeah. Um, yeah, I love this show from right away. Just great chemistry, casting, acting, and writing really bring the characters alive. The people on the show feel real. There's teasing between siblings, classmates, other family members, etc. Teenagers will make harsh jokes. And yeah, so before getting into the following, I want to make it clear that I'm not... I'm only bothered by the fact that these characters and possibly even actors are not of age yet. Among my favorite movies are The Piano Teacher, Darren Aronofsky's Mother, and Videodrome. Movies that use sex to examine the human condition. But yeah, um, usually I would save this for later, but it doesn't make sense for me to, to not get into it this early. The worst aspect of this show is that like French movies and very like the other French shows, it has underage characters express sexuality, you know, and... This by itself is not, you know, autom like, the problem is that on rare occasions it does this outside of exploring teenage emotion. In my opinion, that is the only way that kind of thing is ever acceptable, and even then it should be avoided as much as possible. Like, just age them up or make it mild, like about kissing, not sex. But yeah, you know, friends will make sexual references, discuss their own sexuality and those of their peers. And the physical aspect is, of course, a major part of the show, as it is for gender non-conforming people in real life, especially, like, teenagers and such, uh, you know. And there are many times where characters will gently push each other. We see how this kind of thing can actually be an expression of sexual tension between people. And like real-life France, there's a lot of ethnic diversity. And the show brings up the issue of bathrooms when you're gender non-conforming, how frustrating the situation can get if you're dealing with a doctor who does not respect your feelings or understand the issue. 
The show features a lot of chronological jumps. I would argue they're all effective and called for. And there's this thing where sometimes when someone is on the phone with another person, the actor playing the other person will be on camera, frequently out of focus, which I, I don't want to get too much into. I just I thought that that was a very effective way to handle that particular character. Early on, some of the character relationships seem like they're very straightforward, but as the show progresses, you realize the complexity, which is very true to life. You know, you might form a, a very basic opinion of someone the first time you encounter them, but if you're open to, you know, you might realize that they're very, there's more to it than, than the surface. And gayness is somewhat accepted in the friend group. You're not kicked out and most teased, and not necessarily teased more about it than the straights, but we do wonder, will intersex be accepted? And the show understands not all consent is verbal, but without consent it is assault. And yeah, so there's currently one season, ten episodes, each between 21 and 27 minutes. And in each case, the length of an episode is determined by what the episode will be best served by. So you could easily just sit down and binge this entire season just like that. Most, perhaps all, of the characters will make mistakes. I've, it's not that I don't remember, it's that I don't want to give away for sure. Most, maybe all, of the characters make mistakes, but no one is purely good or evil. It is on the side of Sasha, but some of the things that others say and do that upset her, it's clear they're not looking to upset her the way that it does upset her. You know, it's just teasing. Some of the teenage characters definitely do awful things, as countless teenagers do, but the show doesn't judge them, merely represent reality, and again, underline that it's important to support the, the LGBTQ community. It's important that we don't judge teenagers too harshly, but instead try to guide them the best we can. Now, there are some really excellent articles about this show that I... Like, if I just read everything great in these articles, I would be reading the entire articles, and I don't want to deny them the, the clicks. So... I'm going to be quoting a couple of parts from these articles and linking to the entire articles in the description box. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the, the after being kept in the dark for so long, and after years of being pushed to identify as something she is not, a boy, Sasha has learned to live with anger and fear between the doctors who've tried to fix her, quotes, and her parents who've always hidden it to protect her. The, her perception of herself and her own body is deeply troubled. Although she still has many questions, she is ready for a new beginning. Let's see. And yeah, the series excels in its naturalism, direction, actors, and above all, its subject matter. And oh, right, the huh, yeah. Um, let's see. There we go. <coughs> Yeah, it's the first French series on intersexuality. And, uh, yeah, so Yael Lamont, the creator, writer, and co-director of About Sasha, was inspired to create the story ten years ago after meeting an intersex person. And, uh, yeah, so when she was a teenager, she had a whole bunch of friends. Among them was a rather comfortable person who during a medical examination found out why their body was covered with scars. They discovered they were born intersex, that it has always been hidden from them. This was very violent for them. They felt monstrous, according to their own words at the time, because of this medical label, which modified their relationship with others, and especially with themselves. Witnessing this collapse of identity was revolting and shocking for me. And for a while, she actually, yeah, she faced a lot of backlash from people who denied that ex intersexuality existed or claim that it was just like being transgender. And yeah, you know, she she fought for years to, to get this told. And let's see. And yeah, one of the interesting aspects of the show is how Sasha's parents 
react to their child's identity crisis. And see, yeah, on the one hand, they wanted to protect her by having her undergo gender designation surgery as a child, and now we feel all the guilt that is eating away at them. On the other hand, they are completely overwhelmed by the situation and have no idea how to handle it. They want their child to be happy and live her life authentically, but are not sure how to address it. Many parents of intersex children find this balancing act challenging. About Sasha does a good job of showing how complex and difficult it can be for everyone involved. And let's see. Yeah, I think. Right, and um, th yeah, th yeah, Longman was accom accompanied throughout the writing process and on the set by Louis Petit and Lucien Nury, the co-founders of the Collectif Intersex Activiste, the first association in France for intersex people. Before we even started to write a single line, we called on Louis Petit, who co-founded the association, who was our consultant for the entire project. They allowed us to validate the psychology of the character, but especially the credibility and accuracy of our story. They showed great patience and generosity to allow us to tell this individual story in which the intersex community could recognize itself. Nuri has become ha officially become the first intersex actor to appear in a French television series. They play Louis, Sasha's intersex mentor. It's super important that the collective exists in the show because usually intersex people are portrayed alone without any connection to the community, says the actor. They add, it's dramatic because the medical ideology to hide, or hide intersexuality makes it a real taboo. It is very difficult for an intersex person to get rid of this feeling of shame that is instilled in them. Often doctors put a lot of emphasis on the rarity of our variations and the discovery of intersexuality is accompanied by a terrible feeling of loneliness. And of course, a lot of teenagers are already very lonely. So, yeah. It is the the kind of thing that can make it, you know, even worse. And the yeah, um, she started writing the series in 2012, and no one wanted to hear about it. Received only strong rejections until she met producers at France TV. Slash, in March 2020, who understood the project, times had also changed a bit. And and this was very interesting. Langman never wanted to stick to a trend, as reflecting her choice to blend the time periods in the series. The clothes are reminiscent of the 80s or 90s, even if the protagonists have cell phones and are alive today. We wanted it to be timeless, so it could appeal to many. A few things have changed in the last decades. The operations are not yet prohibited. Parents of intersex children are still told they are sick. But an intersex person is born in full health and can live happily. When a child is operated on the genitals, a series of surgical complications usually follow. They also have to take medication all their lives to compensate for the removed gonads. And... So the... the Let's see. Um, yeah, there were um, yeah, they were they were very careful when casting Sasha, and they did, you know, they did consider casting. An, an intersex actor. Um, let's see. The um, hmm. I um. Ah. Uh, Okay, I'm struggling to find the the quote right now, but the 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 actress playing Sasha is a a cis woman. She is not herself intersex. Um, 
let's uh yeah i'm i'm struggling to find it but there was something about that you know they did consider casting an intersex for you know obviously that would be very um you know the the yeah, actually, I have a good quote here. The actor had her share of doubts for the role of Sasha. As I'm not an intersex person, I was afraid of not being legitimate. If the intersex activist collective had not validated me, I would not have accepted the part. Which is, of course, very important. Um, yeah, the the... It was something about that the the you know if the the mm, they they were let's see yeah yeah uh, they did audition tons of actors for Sasha's characters boys boys girls non-binary actors trans actors and it was something about that at the you know someone who is a teenager is already dealing with a lot of you know so so they didn't want to also ask them to to act in something that obviously could be very upsetting for her you know them it could be very upsetting to them to the the yeah um and yeah i i urge you please read the entire uh, articles the the yeah the links will be in the description box and um There we go. Okay, and that brings us to the characters. So, the, there we go. Um, yes. So the the um, yeah. So the the mother of Sasha and Pauline played by Daphne Bjorki. Uh, you know, basically, she, you know, that that character feels like, you know, she felt like she was pushed into becoming pregnant at age 20 by her husband, their father. She's now 37, still really wants to go back to college, something that the others make fun of because they feel it's very unlikely. She still has a wild side and frequently her heavily tattooed arms will be uncovered by shirt sleeves to show how covered they are by tat sleeves and she makes organic drugs including antidepressants for the family and she tries to be open and understanding and supportive but she also doesn't get everything right and her father you know the the father legitimately believes that he's doing the right thing by pushing for gender binary he believes that it is an illness because that's what the doctors told him and treatment will mean that Sasha has a much better life and this is a common misconception I really appreciate the the show's willingness to you know it's there's never a doubt that the show is saying that that Sasha being intersex that doesn't mean that there's actually something wrong with her it's the way that people view it including sometimes doctors that's wrong you know, but the show is also willing to acknowledge that some people who who do end up doing hurtful things, harmful things, they're not looking to be cruel. Some of them are, maybe, are. you know, the, the show makes a clear distinction. Not all of them, and that is extremely important to, to you know, yeah, and and it it does like the show encourages that we cishet learn about the the 
you know, these the, the gender non-conforming and you know learn learn how to be so to, so as we so as to not trigger any kind of gender dysphoria. And I use the term triggering not like as a joke. I use it yeah. The acting for Sasha is incredibly subtle. There are a lot of times where she's clearly remembering something negative, getting illusions, and a lot of the time the editing will cut in a brief shot of the things she's thinking about that are upsetting, and she has to repress that since we currently live in a culture where it is seen as better to repress emotions than express them. And just, yeah, amazing. The, the actress is named Angela Metzger, and just amazing. I, I, I really want to see her in, in more stuff. The, just the, the, um, yeah, she's, she's been in some others. This is not the, the first thing she appears in, and she has upcoming stuff as well. Um, yeah, really, really hope, you know, whether it's more French language or, but but really, if every actor in this, like, I did not feel like there was a single actor who just felt like, okay, I'm sorry, this person is just not convincing. Everyone they found was really convincing. One of the members of the friend group, Miva, can be very harsh with the other friends, and it came across to me as if she's insecure and overcompensating, as she's not conventionally attractive. Several of the others are, and... You know, I at first I thought, oh, this is she's the bully character. She's just going to be really obnoxious. But they do actually, you know, the the show ma makes sure that there is more to her than than that. I don't know if I want to get too much into the other. Um, I, I, um, yes, just, just briefly, um, so, yeah, other than Sasha, we, there is her, her younger sister, Pauline, played by Saul Benchetri, Anna, played by Paola Locatelli, is, yeah, the next several are members of the friend group, Alex, play, play, Ale, I guess, played by Marine Judas. Cynthia, played by Andrea Furet. I, I did not pick up how they pronounced Cynthia. I've never heard it said by someone who didn't, who wasn't like English speaking. Lina Girl plays Miva. Um, and Regie Nikizi plays Sam. And yeah, then I, I mentioned with Andrea Neri playing Loi. And I got us. Oh, right, right. I believe this is the neighbor kid, Najim Segudi, as Saki. The mother is played by Daphne Burki. The father by Grégoire Collin. There's a. Um, uh, I don't know if I want to give away what the character is, but there is a character known as Greg, played by Othan. And the math professor is played by Thomas Arnold. And the, the, yeah, just incredible acting. And something I really appreciated was the show makes it clear that, like, as a teenager, like, who you are attracted to and who you, you know, want to where you want to take the relationship to the next level, be more than friends and that kind of thing, that can actually, you know, change a lot, you know, and and I, I, I don't know enough about France to say, but I could imagine it is realistic, you know, yeah, I already mentioned, like, the, the friend group, like, it's, it, it definitely seems like Sam is gay, and they, they talk about you know, oh, he's really attracted to this this guy, and they don't, like, make it out as bad. It's more like, you know, teasing, like, oh, someone has a crush, that kind of thing, more than, like, they're not saying that there's something wrong with it, you know, and, 
yeah, like I've I've seen so many American pieces of media where it is very very like they they act like oh you could you couldn't possibly develop feelings for more than one person at the same time and that's just that's not accurate like that doesn't mean that you have to act on all those emotions and certainly it really depends on the the people you know they they have to consent obviously but yeah you you like i remember being a teenager i did like you know yeah there were maybe some that meant more to me than others but like yeah you you develop crushes on on multiple people and yeah the the show like you know whether whether the crush is you know heterosexual or not the the yeah the the friend group don't really you know and uh, yeah i i think i'll just briefly talk about you know about the the diversity um sam is uh, a, a black man zaki i uh definitely uh, um I would guess like Muslim kind of you know, and there there's a lot of Muslim immigrants in France, and despite you know there's a lot of and and uh, this, I'm not putting this on like other countries. There are there are a lot of Islamophobes in France. It is it is a problem, and not to say to be clear, there is also a problem. They do have some really really um, extremist Muslims there, and there have been terrorist attacks you know but this is a piece of media that doesn't say that all you know this is a yeah a piece of media from France that doesn't make the absurd claim that all Muslims are just like evil like Zaki comes across as, as sweet and maybe kind of adorable you know he's 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 trying you know kind of thing let's see the um yeah and the show in addition to to intersex it also features uh, at least one trans character um anna i i don't know exactly but she has like browner skin than than you know some of the others and like big curly hair kind of you know so the yeah and that brings us, to, and it is also you know other than intersex, it goes into other like you know um, the the lived experiences of minorities. Uh, with the with the Muslim, there is this thing of like uh, I don't think I want to give it away, but but there's a thing that like someone in his family did something that you know not all you know so yeah some others in the family maybe don't think he should have done and so you know it's not something they talk about a lot it's you know and yeah the the intersex transgender experience life experiences are talked about it it does you know um stuff like rape and sexual assault are brought up and something I greatly appreciate they don't repeat the the absurd like completely outdated I, I get why some people find it you know some some people like the idea but it has for a very long time been the case that rape and sexual assault is much more likely to happen within the like group of, of you know maybe it's one of the friends maybe it's a family member you know it is not usually someone jumping out of the bushes and and raping someone in an alley at night like kind of thing you know it happens yes it, it but but it's extremely important when you know it's important to take accusations seriously when someone you know comes forward and says one of my friends or family members did this and the show underlines this that not everybody does believe it but that is how it, it you know that is a much more likely way for it to happen uh, you know and and when you when you sit down and really think about it 
you know, it, it also just makes logical sense. Even if we didn't look at all the, the numbers for it, you know, they have opportunity, that they have they have access, you know, and yeah, a lot of people, you know, some some people develop an attraction to someone close to them over time. And again, the attraction itself is not necessarily something that you can help, but you know what you should do then is try to try to deal with that. Don't act on it, you know. And the the dialogue is is really really good. Like it, you know, everyone has their own voice. Like for sure, some of the teenagers talk in fairly similar ways, but like for a lot of the lines, like. Even if you, like, if you just wrote out part of a line, and and like it had been a really long time before since you last seen the the show, and you just look at it, you'd probably be able to say, oh, that's that's that character saying that, and maybe also know who they're talking to, and and yeah. Even if the the line itself doesn't have a lot of detail. And, uh, yeah, so, the entire show is in, in French. Um, I don't think there were other languages uh, spoken. If you're watching it on Disney+, Plus, there are subtitles. Uh, you know, I watched it with English subtitles. And they do a really, really great job. They get a lot of, like, the, th you know, the, the moment you have subtitles, like, it's really, okay... That is, is this person trying to get across, you know, and, and yeah, the, the, you know, the people, the, the person or people responsible for the subtitles, for the English subtitles for this show that are on Disney+, Plus, excellent job. Like, they, you know, it, it was slightly awkward. They'll, they'll use, like, actual British slang, like, blokes and wanker and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's better than stuff that is not that specific, because... You know, I'm going to go ahead and assume that's basically what they were saying. You know, they were using words that would translate to that. You know, so, so yeah. And I... Uh, this doesn't really have any... Um, usually, this is where I would go into, like, Metacritic Rotten Tomatoes and that kind of thing. This doesn't... It's, yeah, it doesn't really have any. Um, which is too bad. Now, right, so the cinematography, in addition to what I've already mentioned, there's a lot of, of like, shoulder cam and just, yeah, really, really, it, it's, it really puts you right there. It's, it's not filmed in a way that feels like, oh, it's like a big movie kind of thing, which is sometimes, you know, French, French directors love, like, the the kind of you know I I yeah I mentioned Luc Besson I mentioned Jean Pierre Genet you know that just if you haven't treat yourself they they do amazing work uh, you know there's there's some incredibly evocative stuff in for example Emily uh, you know and and the um, yeah the Fifth Element also just spectacular like you you will never forget the, the these movies you know. They they are they are so much daring that a lot of of American, more recently American directors have have gotten there as well. But for you know some yeah some American directors just don't. And and to be fair to be fair, to some extent it's studio interference. But yeah, um, but but yeah this show does not really do that. It it wouldn't really work. You know like in in on in in Emily like. There's a scene where, like, the mother is really freaked out about something, and there's, like, a close-up of her screaming, and she's, like, saying it like this. And, you know, it'll cut to the thing that she's she's scared by, and, and the th you know, very, very evocative. And the show, you know, the show will also have people scared of something or such, but instead of this very, like, I would almost compare it to, like, a comic book. There's, there's some comic bookish... Se sequences, the the way that they're they're filmed and edited, 
in Emily, and and here it's much more like you're there, basically. You know, it's it's closer to something like Man Bites Dog, although without the like that one is explicitly supposed to be. You know, it is a mockumentary. It is a staged documentary. The editing is amazing. The the I, I mentioned the chronological jumps. There's also and and the way that it'll cut to something that Sasha is being reminded of, of a trauma that she's trying to repress. In addition, there's some really really well handled montages and like intercutting of of things. That you know, I don't want to give away exactly which, but there's at least one episode of this season where just straight up there is a a an anchoring kind of there's a specific sequence that it keeps cutting back to and sometimes it'll cut away from the visuals but include but remain the the leave in the audio and that kind of thing and it's it's beautifully done like it's so the just the technical aspects throughout this show amazing like i just yeah and and this is the kind of thing like you know it shouldn't have to be but for some people if they you know for yeah, if they're going to learn about intersex, it has to be something like this. It has to be a really, really well, uh, um, well produced piece of of media, and yeah, shouldn't have to be. But for some people, it is, and this is it. You know, if you know someone in your life that you need, to, you know, that yeah, that needs to understand. You know, keep, keeping in mind, you know, this definitely goes further than some people would like, but yeah. This this is very much something that can increase empathy and and also just help inform without like pathologizing or fetishizing and that's extremely important. You know the moment that you say intersex or non-gender conforming, yeah, um, you know some people get images in their heads and they can't think about anything else they they you know they see something that they think is wrong and they have to change it they have to fix it and that's not you know it's in intersex people and and transgender people you know it's it's absurd how much they have to fight for just general recognition for for being seen and yeah, you know, the, the, it's, it's just, it's down to this, you know, a, a lot of us have been taught this, this binary idea of gender and the, that, you know, heteronormativity is the only way to go. And so, yeah, we, you know, a lot of us have to unlearn what we've been taught, but the, the yeah you know shows like this and and there's also there's a lot of of youtube videos and and online articles where you can learn how to talk about and to you know lgbtq people in a way that isn't offensive but without like you know for some for some reason some people feel that they need to find a trans person and then say, or or they'll like meet a trans person, and they'll immediately say this without stopping to think, how would I feel if I was the one being asked, you know? And then, you know, yeah, some trans people, you know, are offended by the transphobic language, and so these cishet people will get really defensive instead of just like that's the thing. If someone criticizes you. Before you get defensive, try to stop and actually think. Do some do some soul searching. Is there something? You know, am I actually in the wrong? How could I be right in the future? And there are not a lot of special effects, but there are a couple, and they are immaculate. Like just. Yeah, in incredible. And yeah, there's a, a little stunt work, which is also really, really like it's it's visceral. Like you really feel 
like like you, yeah it's it's very very yeah now the yeah the the music is really great there's there's this really kind of throbbing bass intense kind of thing for scenes where that is is what makes the most sense and you know there's more light kind of you know but yeah the the music always fits the the scene and 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 you know they they fit the what's the word um they fit the environment you know it's it's yeah and let's see yeah and it is also you know there there is you know the show has a sense of humor there's there's some things that are you know yeah you know sometimes characters will intentionally make jokes some sometimes something will happen that the character didn't mean for it to be a joke but you you know we still laugh because it's it's a funny yeah and yeah uh the there's no there are no filler episodes this is the kind of show where it is very important that you watch every episode and you watch them in order uh, you know a lot happens that you'll you'll be lost you know let's see and that yeah so the best elements of this are the empathy for and understanding of intersex identity and issues the acting the writing the direction i already went into the worst thing according to myself since i didn't find you know like I think some of the articles that I'll be linking to qualify as reviews, but they didn't really contain criticisms, and I don't blame them for that. So, no, I, I do not have... Like, if I had to guess, I can imagine there will probably be people... <coughs> I can imagine some people in America might think that there's too much ethnic diversity... Now, the thing I was most worried about was that it would downplay the intersex identity to try to play it safe. And the thing I was most looking forward to was the approach to an intersex story. And, yeah, so I would definitely say that, yeah, so, so yeah. Um, the, the, um... It's the the kind of show where like I'm I'm satisfied with this, you know. If there is never any more of this, that's perfectly fine. But they could also easily follow it up, either you know, soon or further down the line. Now, I I did see one trailer with English subtitles. I I do think it gave at least a little bit too much away, but it also give gives you a really good idea of what the show is like. The cover and poster do not give too much away and somewhat give you an idea of what it is like. And yeah, so the the um, the show is not on Rotten Tomatoes or Metacritic. Like I think, it, let's see, did I find something that sounded like it, but it was the wrong year? I th anyway, and the the. Um, yeah, it it doesn't have an IMDb. Oh, hold on. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thirty-eight people voted for it on IMDb. It has an overall rating of seven point four out of ten. Twenty-three point seven percent gave it an eight. Eighteen point four gave it a seven. Fifteen point eight gave it a ten. Thirteen point two gave it a six. Ten point five gave it a nine. I don't really know how anybody gave this less than six, but yeah, uh, seven point nine percent gave it one, which really, really, that sounds to me like they object to something. Like, I'd like to think that it's the the you know the underage sexuality that they felt that some of that went too far, but 
I can't help but wonder if some people are just not willing at all to engage with a piece of media that has a positive depiction of intersex. Now, 5.3% gave it 5, 26 gave it 4, 26 gave it 3, and 0% gave it 2. Now, <clears throat> let's see, I think, yeah, it does not does not seem like there is any um, review of the, of the show on IMDb, and the, uh, let's see, what was the thing with the, the external review site has one link, and it's French. Now, so I, so I did not read it. Um, I realized that I might get something out of running it through Google Translate, but it's, I, I tend not to do that. That brings us to the very end. So, yeah, um, I rate this eight empathetic intersex stories out of ten, and I'm definitely going to be watching it again. I wouldn't rule out maybe watching some of it again just today, you know, and I, I think this deserves to have been seen by way more people than it, you know, yeah, and I do think that as more people, you know, hopefully more people will realize, you know, it's on Disney+. Plus. It's not only on French TV. I get that if it's only on French TV, I don't know how anybody who doesn't live in France is going to see it. But it, it's on Disney+, Plus, which has a huge subscriber base, you know, uh, hopefully people will will see. I, th I think I found it on the, what's it called, the, the I think it, it yeah, because I, Yes, I, I I saw it on the on the. Let's see, it is called New to Disney Plus. When you when you go to the the homepage of of Disney Plus, yes, it's still it's still right there. It's not one of the very first. I think it might have been the first when when I added this to the the schedule. It's, but yeah, it's it's in there. So you know, hopefully more people will will watch it. Um, I really appreciate anyone sharing this video to to help you know yeah help spread awareness of this this show i think a huge chunk of the people who watch it will really really appreciate it and yeah um let me know what is your favorite french movie or tv show and you know what yeah, what what especially do you do you love about it? I, I like some of these. Like I have not watched. Like yeah, Doberman, Man Bites Dog. I haven't watched them in like fifteen years. I still remember stuff about them. Like there's stuff I watched earlier this year that I already forgot about. You know, so just yeah. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video if you watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode that hit Disney Plus of True Lies, one for The Clearing, and one for the most recent episode I've personally gotten to of Scream Queens. Once there is current Disney Plus... Um, MCU stuff again, I will, you know, at the very least the live action stuff, I will do videos on that. Same thing for when Star Wars, you know, when, when more live action Star Wars comes out on Disney+. Plus. And as soon as I'm caught up on the animated Star Wars, I will start watching the, the recent ones as well. You know, I am close to done with the first season of Resistance. So, yeah, there's still some to go before I am caught up. And recently the Real Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, so let's catch me next time. I hope, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.